Here he comes with my knees. I'll give them way till he take leave, and presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. I have set too much onto a heart of stone, and laid mine honor to unsherry out. There's something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong potent fault it is, that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears, goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Kiss my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you, and I beseech you come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honor save me upon asking give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that, which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fame like thee might bear my soul to power. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, but take thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs art thou hast done to me, I know not, but thy interceptor, full of spite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee to the orchid end, dismount thy tuck, the year in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel with, with it to me. To my remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offense done to any man. I pray you, sir, what is he? He's a knight. Dealt with unhatched for a year, on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in private role. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his incentive at the moment is so invisible that satisfaction can be none but by the pains of death and sorcery. Hob nob is his word, give it or take it. I will return again into the house and desire some kind of lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of command that will cause representing on others to taste their valor. He let this man, this is a man of that court. Sir, no. His indignation drives itself out of a very constant injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. This is as uncivil as strange, I beseech you. Do me this curious office, as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Why, man, he is a very devil. I have not seen such a farrago. I had passed with him, rapier, scabbard, and all, and he gives me the stuck in which a more emotion. Paxan, I'll not meddle with him. Aye, but he will not be pacified. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake. The very he hath better to talk with him of his war, and he finds that now sacred to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw for the supplements of his vow. He protests he will not hurt me. Pray God, defend me. The little thing will make me tell him how much I want him. There's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot be the dweller of wood, but he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, do it. Pray God he is a. I do assure you, it is my will. Cut up your sword! Oh, behold, here come the officers. I'll be with you on. Pray, sir. Put your sword up, if you please. Mary will I, sir, and for that I promise you. I'll be as good as my word. He will bury you easily and reigns well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of court Rosino. Do you mistake me, sir. No, sir, no jot. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer. What would you do now? Now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse? It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the very kindness you have showed me here, in part being prompted to show by your present trouble out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make the vision of my present with you. Hold, here's my hat, officer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it makes me so unsound a man as to acquit you with those unkindness that I have done for you. I know of none. Oh, heavens himself! Come, sir, I pray you go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half of, out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which he thought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. 
What's that to us? This time goes by away. But oh how vile an idol proves is God, though has Sebastian done good feature shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be con deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauty of evil are empty trunks overflourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come away. Leave me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly, that he believes himself, so do not I. Prove true, imagination, oh, prove true, that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. Come hither, knight, we'll whisper over a cup or two of those same saws. He named Sebastian, I my brother know yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor with my brother, and he went and still in his fashion, color, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, it prove. Tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. You make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well, Hagati Faith, no, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her. Nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose either. I prithee, bet thy, bet thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Bet my folly? He has heard that word of some great man now applies to a fool. Bet my folly. I am afraid this great lover, the world, will prove a cockney. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall bet to my lady. Shall I bet to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There is money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give you worse pain. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money to get themselves a good report after fourteen years' purchase. Now, sir, have I met you again? Here's for you. Why, there's for thee. Ah, and there, and there. Are all these people mad? Pull, sir, or I'll throw your dagger over the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats or for two pence. Come on, sir, hold. Nay, let him let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there be any law in Illyria. I strike him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron, your war flesh. Come on. I will be free from thee. What wast thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. What? What? Nay, then I must have an ounce or two of this malparent blood from you. Hold, Toby, on thy life I charge thee. Hold, madam. Will it be ever thus, ungracious wretch? Be not offended, dear Cesario. Roots might be gone. Do not deny, beshrew his soul for me. He started one port hard of mine in thee. What relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or am I mad? Or else this is a dream? Let fancy still my sense in lethe steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. Square it up, on God. Aha! the air, that is the glorious sun, this pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that it rasped me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was. And there I found this credit, so far exceed in all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes, and wrangle with my reason that persuades me, to any other trust but that I am mad, or else the lady's mad. Yet, if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs, and their dispatch, with such a cup, with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing, as I perceive she does. There is something in it that is deceivable. But here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine, if you mean well. Now go with me, and with this holy man, into this chantry by. There and before him, and underneath that consecrated roof, Plight me the full assurance of your faith, that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. 
He shall conceal it, whilst you are willing it shall come to note. What time we will our celebration keep according to my birth? What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine, that they may fairly note this act of mine. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. A bobbling vessel he was a captain of. That very envy and that tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? He did me kindness, kindness, sir, and drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech on me. I know not what was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt water thief. Or see no noble sir. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, did I redeem a wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him and did her thereto add my love without retention or restraint. All his in dedication for his sake did I expose my myself, pure for his love, and grew twenty years removed from him. While one would wink, denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use, not half an hour before. How can this be? Here comes the countess, now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam! Gracious Olivia, what do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak, but my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cool? Still so constant, lord? What to perverseness? You uncivil lady? Even what it pleases my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it, since you to non-regardance cast my faith, but this your opinion, whom I know you love, I'll sacrifice the land that I do love. To spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, apt, and willing, To do you rest, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love, more than I love these eyes, More than I love my life. I, me, detest him. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth, the Holy Father. Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Aye, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah. No, no, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the basis of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy pro propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou, then thou art. O oh, thou dissembling cub, where thou and I henceforth may never meet, my lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody costume too. For the love of God, your help. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? Odes lifelings, here he is, you broke my head for nothing. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by bloody coxcomb. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, we made each other but so long ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons? A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, oh my dear Antonio, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fear, fears thou that, Antonio? How have you made a vision of yourself? Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. I had a sister whom the blind ladies and surgeons have devoured. Now, share you, what kid are you to me? Of Messaline, Sebastian was my father, and Sebastian was my brother too. So when he suited to his watery tomb. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even? I should I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, Thrice welcome, John Viola. 
if nothing less to make us happy both, that I am Viola. Wish to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town, wherein lie my maiden weeds. So comes it, baby. You have been mistook, but nature to her bias drew in that. You are betrothed both to a maid and a man. I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And those swearings keep true in soul, as doth thou or continent with fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, but let me see thee in, the, in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me on shore hath my woman's gardens. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract, a more extracting frenzy of mine own. From my remembrance, clearly banished his. such a feat. Which of the wrongs art thou hath done to me? I know not, but thy interceptor. Put up your sword! No! <laughs> After 14 years purchase. 14 years purchase! Oh, 
Hi. Would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so. <laughs> Oh, cut! 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 What are you- What are you- <laughs> I hit you hard, huh? Now look, you- Oh, 